Good morning, everybody. My name is Amy, and I am an alcoholic. Good morning, Amy. And I have had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps through the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous with the grace of a very loving God in my life. Several step study sponsors that have given me their time and their love and their care um, and their experience with these steps. Um, I have made my formal amends and I continue to live in the latter steps, 10, 11, and 12 daily, to the best of my willingness each and every day. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for calling. It was really a God thing. I literally just moved back to Worcester uh, last weekend, and uh, within a matter of 24 to 48 hours, I got a call to speak at this meeting. So it was, uh, it, it was wonderful. It, it, it's a great homecoming. I'm right where I, I, I'm home. So, and, and I don't just mean Worcester. I mean with all of you. Um, so um, I'm grateful to be here. Um, so yeah, so step 12. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking on the way here how there was a time um, after I had done this work um, when I was finally qualified to speak after having had experience with these steps. Um, when I, I needed to know, I needed to know what step we were on before I would get there so that I could, I don't know, do what. I thought prepare, but really it was just stress about it. Um, and, you know, somewhere along the way, I, that, that ceased. And I, and, I, and I only say that because it made me realize that, you know, continue, continue, continue. You know, this work continues. It's not like I graduated just because I'm in the ladder, you know, I'm living in the ladder steps. It's, it's a way of life. And as I have continued to grow, get closer to God, um, have more experience living these steps in my, in my daily life, um, it, it, it's just, it's my life. It's not a part of my life, it's my life. This is my way of life today. And so it really is irrelevant to me what step we're on because I can honestly say that I have experience with all of the steps and I continue to look at them, study them, live them, experience them every single day of my life um, with God and a sponsor and all of you. So, um, so that being said, um, step 12, um, I'm really going to try to just stick to, to where we're at today. Having had a spiritual awakening as the, the result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics. Um, so that's, um, you know, right out of the gate in the reading this morning, um, it tells me that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. Intensive work with other alcoholics. So what does that look like? I remember when I first, start, you know, first started coming to Big Book Step Study, um, you know, I used to think, yeah, I don't know if I'm really going to have time for that. Um, I'm a pretty busy woman, you know. Um, I've got, you know, a job to work and shopping to do and, you know, whatever. And... Um, and, um, you know, I can honestly tell you that um, my experience has been um, because I am an alcoholic and first and foremost because I'm a human being that um, I do not do this perfectly I, and I never have. I have gotten more and more proficient at living these steps in my life on a daily basis. But there have been times in my uh, recovery since I did this work and have been living in this work, that I have um, gotten complacent. I have rested on my laurels. And, and I have stopped taking care of myself. And I have gotten extremely sick, extremely spiritually sick. Um, and one of the things that has helped to pull me back, um, back to God, back to life, back to re my recovery has been um, getting back to work with other people, with other alcoholics. That has been truly one of the saving graces. And honestly, at those times, it's probably one of the last things that I want to do. Honestly, I'm like, no, listen, I need help. <laughs> I, I don't want to help you. I want you to help me. I don't want you to just help me. I want you to, like, carry me to the finish line, you know, because that's my nature. When I'm not working this program and when I'm not going to God in all things, um, you know, and I've said this before, but my nature is to just want to attach myself like a barnacle to whomever I can find that will allow me to suck the life out of them, whether it be <laughs> their recovery, their affection, whatever it is, and just kind of, and then when they, when I've bled them dry, I will somehow blame them for the fact that they have nothing left to give and I will move on. And honestly, that's, a, that's pretty, makes you want to take me home and meet your mother, doesn't it? So, um, so, um, but that, that that's my nature. Without God in my life, honestly, you know, I mean, you know, I, I have other attributes, I'm sure, but, um, but that, that's who I am. So intensive work with others is definitely, um, is definitely a, a, 
a bright, it's a bright spot in my life, it truly is. Um, I have only had the experience of taking one woman um, completely through this process. I have started many other women in the process. And, you know, as it tells us in the reading, um, you know, I can't give to somebody what they don't want. So I can show up and I can present them with what I have. Now, in days gone by, let me just give you a little quick little background, not a drunk log at all, but just so you know, I was a sober alcoholic, sober alcoholic, and alcoholic synonymous for many, many years. And um, I didn't have really any recovery at all. I was, I was physically sober. I used to think I was a two-stepper, and I was really okay with that, because I like to dance, so two-step made me think of it, you know, because... So, uh, but I really was a half-stepper. I admitted that, you know, that my life, um, I admitted that I was powerless over alcohol. That's really where it began and ended for me for many years in Alcoholics Anonymous. I knew I couldn't drink, um, and by the grace of God and you people in meetings, I managed to stay sober. But I did not address on any level the spiritual malady that I suffer from. I did not address nor embrace or accept the fact that I had a mental and spiritual illness. Um, that it was not just um, a physical malady. Um, and and say, having now said that, I will tell you that I used to work with others back in those days, which horrifies me now. I mean, absolutely horrifies me. Thank God I am no one's higher power. Everybody has their own higher power. Um, and by the grace of God, some of those women are actually still sober today and living vital, wonderful, recovering lives. And we're actually still dear friends. But I think back and, you know, um, what did working with others look like to me back then? It looked like um, going on a lot of commitments and talking about my war stories, um, you know, uh, which, you know, I, I wore like badges of honor, you know, like I survived this and I survived that and I totaled my car and I got two DWs. And, and I'm, not, I'm not belittling that, but I'm just saying that there was really, I had nothing else to offer because I had not done this work, so I had not had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps. I didn't have a message to carry to other people. Um, I could only talk about the problem. I couldn't talk about the solution because I didn't have a solution in my life. My solution back in those days was a new boyfriend, a new husband, a new girlfriend, new shoes, a new job, a new apartment. Um, you know, those are my solutions to what ailed me. Um, and honestly, I didn't even know what I was ailing from because I hadn't done this work and I thought that sobriety, physical sobriety was the beginning and the end of what Alcoholics Anonymous had to offer me. And, and sadly, I shortchanged myself for a long, long time because um, as, as we all know, um, you know, we have a way of life here that enables us to go forth out in the world. It enables me to go forth out in the world now and have a very fulfilling, wonderful life that I could never have dreamed of. So, um, so I did shortchange myself and, you know, and I was giving relationship advice as I was filing for my umpteenth divorce. I was, you know, giving financial advice as I was filing for bankruptcy, um, you know, and, um, and it all seemed perfectly logical to me um, back then. So today that's not the case. So um, to be helpful is our only aim, it tells me here. You know, this is about being altruistic and being helpful. And again, by the time I've, I've gotten to step 12, Clearly, a miracle has happened um, as a result of this work because, again, I will just restate that by, na by my nature, without God, without these steps, without this program of recovery in my life, spiritual recovery, um, you know, to be helpful, in my opinion, should be your only aim, you know, to be helpful to me. Um, to be helpful to others really wasn't something that I went around thinking about or really embraced as a concept or a way of life prior to this work. And even when I began this work, I didn't actually believe that that day was ever going to come. Um, and, you know, again, do I do this perfectly? No. But my, I have had a shift in consciousness as a result of this work. I have had a complete shift of consciousness um, to where I now truly have become someone who does think about other people. Um, but I can only be that woman on a daily basis by going to God and by, um, by trying to work in concert with God on a daily basis. Um, I can't, it doesn't matter how altruistic I was yesterday, because guess what? I, I went to bed last night and I woke up and just like a computer, everything reset inside of me back to selfish, restless, irritable, discontent, selfish, self-centered, 
you know, I, I, I go back to my default settings every single night when I go to sleep. I say my prayers, I go to bed, I default back to who I am, and the first thing in the morning, I have got to invoke that same power greater than myself that I call, I personally call God, and I have to bring God in so that I don't go forth into the world because my immediate thought otherwise is going to be, oh God, what's going to happen today? I'll probably get fired. Oh my God, what about this? What about that? You know, it's like the committee begins immediately and, you know, I'm going nowhere fast and why even get out of bed? I mean, that's, that's where I'm going to go. So um, I love that it talks a lot about, I have the word action, action, action circled a lot in here. You know, this is where it's like, I now take all of this, all of the miracle that's happened. Um, uh, I've cleaned house at this point. I've done, you know, I, I've done my house clean, drastic house cleaning. I've taken stock of the items. Um, I, I've, I've t revealed and, and read all of that to um, another person, to, to myself, to, uh, to God. Um, I've been, I've had revealed to me what my character defects are and, um, and I, I invoke God's help every single day at this point to relieve me of those, not to give God a laundry list of what I think should be, I should be relieved of, but on a daily basis to say, to humbly say, I have no idea what your plans are for me today, but whatever they are, please take from me what's not going to serve me and, and provide me with whatever I need to, to, to do your will. Because I don't know what, what, what I'm going to need and what I'm not going to need on any given day. And then, then that's changed since I originally did this work. Because I used to immediately get up and say, and help me be good, and help me be kind, and help me be this, and help me be that, and take this, and take that. And, you know, that's not, the, if God's my new employer, that would be like me going to my job in the morning and saying, like, okay, listen, here's what we're going to do today. You're going to do this, 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 and this, and then I'll do that, 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 you know. And that, you know, so I have to honestly think about it, like, okay, I already know God's my new employer. So I'm not going to go to God in the morning and say, like, do this, do that, do this. I'm going to let God direct me accordingly. Um, I've made my, you know, made my list, uh, my eight-step list. I've gone out. I've made amends. Um, and, um, and I continue to make amends and clean up the wreckage on a daily basis, if in fact there is wreckage. And, you know, and if there's not, I simply give thanks. Um, I maintain a conscious connection with, with a power greater than myself. And, you know, it tells me that um, his attention should be drawn to you as a person who has recovered. A person who has recovered. So it doesn't talk about me as a person who's gotten sober. It talks about me as a person who has recovered. That because I've recovered as a result of this work, I've had a spiritual awakening as the result, not a result, not one of many results, but as the result. The result of this work is going to be that I will have a spiritual awakening. And I doubted that all along, because when I did my writing, I was like, the whole time I wrote, I was like, and I wrote for a long time. I don't recommend that at all. Um, I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. Nope, this isn't going to work. I'm going to be the one that proves that this doesn't work. You know, and, um, and I can tell you, if I can have a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, anyone in this room can have that. Um, because I, you know, um, I needed to see, when I did this work, I needed to see my disease in all of its glory, if you will, um, as a sober woman. I was sober for 15 years without doing this work. When I did this work, I had notebooks and notebooks filled with behaviors and selfishness and self-centeredness and, and spiritual sickness that had nothing to do with alcohol or drugs because I was sober and I was living that way. And I had pages and notebooks and volumes of just really ill, sick, um, just very, very sad, sick behavior. Uh, and I needed to see that. That's my experience. That may not be s someone else's experience. And, and I love when I see people come in here and they latch onto this right away. But my experience is that I needed to be the one that sits up here and tells you that, like, I tried everything I could in sobriety to have a, to, to, to put a life together for myself, still trying to force my will um, out in the world. Um, you know, if I could just have the right guy, the right woman, the right wife, the right husband, the right cat, the right dog, the right this, the right that, that I could somehow wrest satisfaction out of this world as a sober woman. And it's not possible. Um, and it tells me in here that, you know, to be vital, faith must be accompanied by self-sacrifice and unselfish and constructive action. What? <laughs> 
That's, that's a pretty tall order and vital, to be vital. Being the seat or the source of life, necessary to life. So for my faith to be necessary, to be vital to my life, which I believe it is today, it, it must, these are, wor- these are right here, it tells me my faith must be accompanied. It's not enough for me to have faith. It must be accompanied by self-sacrifice, unselfish, and constructive action. And I know we're specifically talking about working with others in Alcoholics Anonymous, but that goes, for me, that's across the board in my life. You know, because there are people outside of Alcoholics Anonymous that need me to be self-sacrificing, unselfish, and, you know, constructive, take constructive action. And I, I'm in a phase in my life with some family right now where I, I see that, um, and, um, and I'm able to show up. Um, so, you know, it tells me, it, again, besides the word action, the word well is in here a lot. Um, he has become very curious to know how you got well. Again, not how I got sober how I got well. It keeps cycling back to how I got well, how I got well. Yes, physical sobriety had to come first for this alcoholic, but, but it's so much more than that. It's not about sobriety. It's about how did I get well? Because I can be sober, and sober is not well. <laughs> I can assure you. Anybody wants to look at my notebooks, you're more than welcome to. I can assure you, sober does not mean well. I used to think those words were interchangeable, and they're not. Two completely separate things. So, um, you know, again, it tells me in here, um, it talks about the traits of the alcoholic. You will soon have your friend admitting he has many, if not all, of the traits of the alcoholic. Well, what are the traits of the alcoholic? As a sober woman who was living um, proof that sobriety was not enough, I didn't even know what the traits of an alcoholic were. I, I, I thought it was, again, all about I couldn't drink in safety. The end. You know, ooh, alcoholism solved. Now I can go forth and create havoc in my life and everyone else's, you know. So, um, you know, it talks about a fatal malady of body and mind, body and mind. Body is sobriety. You know, I had that part down, but I didn't have anything. I had no solution working in my life. It tells me over here, it says, if he is to find God, the desire must come from within. So if he is to find God, it doesn't say if he is to get sober. If he is to find God, and I made a note for myself, see page 45, and bear with me for a moment and indulge me. I'll figure, since I have you as a captive audience, you're going to have to. Um, If he is to find God, back on page 45 in We Agnostics, it says, the main object of this book is to enable you to find a power greater than yourself, which will solve your problems. It does right there. It says that's what this whole book was written for. Not to get me sober, but to, for, for me to find a power greater than myself, which will solve my problem. And then over here, it refers back to that. If he is to find God, a.k.a. a power greater than himself, the desire must come from within. That's what this book has done. That's, the book has introduced me not only to myself as an alcoholic, but to a power greater than myself that I call God today. That actually is an active, vital, vital life-sustaining part of my life. Um, and so how do I take this out to, to work with others? Um, it says, um, it also goes on to say that if I'm working with a man or I'm chasing a man, God knows I've done that, um, <laughs> Chasing a man who cannot or will not work with you. Cannot or will not work with you. So, again, right, that actually brought me back to, you know, there's a big difference between cannot and will not. Cannot and will not. In how it works, those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to this simple program. So then over here, it uses the same language, you know. Um, It tells me to stop chasing a man who cannot or will not work with me. So, you know, um, there are are such unfortunates, as it tells us, and how it works. And and for the longest time in AA, before I uh, got to this work, I thought, I must just be one of those unfortunates, you know. Like, that was almost my, my ticket out of having to get well, you know. But then I realized, oh, it says, or will not. Damn it. Um, 
I was definitely a will not, not a cannot. I think there's very few people that cannot recover as, uh, in, you know, with this work. Um, mostly I find that it's people that are, are just not willing. And, and, and you know, I, I certainly don't fault them because that was me for the longest time. And, you know, um, so, you know, it goes on to say, we, you know, that I want to have an opportunity to live and be happy. To spend too much time in any one situation is to deny some other alcoholic an opportunity, again, not to get sober. Deny them an opportunity to live and be happy. Live and be happy. That's what this work is about. It gives me an opportunity, this alcoholic, an opportunity to live and be happy. Wow, you know? I mean, those are two things. I wasn't living. I wasn't living when I was actively drinking, and I can honestly assure you I wasn't living in sobriety. I was surviving. I was surviving as a sober woman. And yes, did, did my life look a lot better? Absolutely. Did, you know, did I become a better human being in general as a result of the fact that I wasn't ingesting alcohol on a regular basis and, or at all and you know, I was sober? Absolutely. But was I still selfish, self-centered, self-seeking? Was I still constantly trying to figure out why I just wasn't happy? Why when I needed this over here and I'd finally get it, I'd be like, yeah, it's not so great. Maybe it's over there, you know? I mean, I did that for 15 years. And in the meantime, I took a lot of people on a lot of wild and crazy rides with me, you know? And, you know... Um, and I created a lot of havoc. So, you know, it says helping others is the foundation stone, the foundation stone of my recovery. A kindly act once in a while isn't enough. You have to act the Good Samaritan every day if need be. I mean, this is pretty strong language. And again, I just want to tell you that this alcoholic sitting in front of you back when I first started through this work, and even when I was like well into this work, but before I had really and truly had my spiritual awakening, I used to read this stuff at meetings and be like, yeah, I don't think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to live up to that. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm going to be capable of doing that. I'm just not that good. I'm good, but I'm not that good. And, um, you know, Again, it's not about perfection, but I can honestly tell you that um, God has wrought a miracle inside of me, you know? I'm still the same kooky gypsy that I've always been, you know? I still, you know, move around more than probably anybody you'll ever meet and, you know, just kind of like, you know, do my thing. And, uh, but, but I can honestly tell you that I have a willingness and a desire to be of service to others in my life today that I never knew existed within me. You know, I have a message of hope to carry today to people that um, I never had before. That um, I think I was afraid to do this work for the longest time because I kind of like the fact that I'm a kooky nut from New Jersey. Like I, you know, I like that I wear stilettos in the snow, and I, I, you know, I like that I, you know, sing, give spontaneous concerts in public places because I think I should be on Broadway, and you know, I, I, I like all that. And and I honestly, I think I was, I was afraid. Somehow, I had this misconception that if I gave myself over to this work and I actually had a spiritual awakening and I became the woman that God wanted me to be, I had this idea that God wanted me to be somebody that I wasn't, that I was going to like, it was like I was going to have a lobotomy somehow, that I was just going to be like, you know, wear things like ball buttoned up to my chin and, you know, and, and um, just, you know, like be a completely different person. And I can honestly tell you that that was a lie that my disease wanted me to believe to keep me from getting well. Because the closer I've gotten to God through this work, the closer I've gotten to me, the me that I am, the me that God knows that I am, the me that God created me to be, the kooky me that God created me to be. And, um, you know, the good, the kind, the loving, the altruistic me, you know, is my default setting to still think about, oh, God, how is this going to affect me? Eek. Yeah, I know your ass has fallen off, but I kind of need your ass to be on because I need you to be there for me. You know, like, 
Are those thoughts still there? Absolutely. I haven't been, you know, I haven't been rendered snow white. I don't, you know, I still have all of that in me. And, and I think I thought that that stuff was just going to be gone at this stage of the game. And if it wasn't, then somehow I didn't have good recovery or I wasn't living a spiritual way of life. But that's not true. I just, they pass. They pass through me like clouds mostly anymore. And I'm able to call them out for what they are. And I'm able to go to God. And I'm able to just, you know, show up. This is about being present and showing up in my life. And, you know, I, as far as working with others goes, all I can be today is a power of example. If someone wants what I have, that's wonderful. I'm happy to share it. I'm happy to share it. But I can't force feed anyone anything. Um, and I, I will work with anyone that wants my help because today I do have experience with these steps. I do live this in my life today. Spirituality is not a part of my life. It's my way of life today. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it tells me right here, the family should be offered your way of life. Should they accept and practice spiritual principles, there is a much better chance that the head of the family will recover. So if I look at those two sentences, essentially they're saying, my way of life is that I've, I've accepted and I practice spiritual principles. That's, that's my way of life today. And, you know, for this alcoholic, that's nothing short of miraculous. And um, so, you know, and I'll just end with this. So 12-step work comes in many forms. And um, so this, this book has my brother's name on it. And this was my brother Steve's um, big book. You can see the pages are yellowed. He died four years sober in 1991. And this is his book, and there's all kinds of things that people wrote to him when he was in Spofford Hall back in the day and so forth. And he 12-stepped me into Alcoholics Anonymous when I was 24 years old. And um, when he died, I didn't want much of anything else except for I wanted his big book. And, um, and you know, that's 12-step work. You know, he did 12-step work with me. And, um, and by just showing up, I just want to let each and every one of you know that you're, you are able to do 12-step work prior to having ha had a spiritual awakening. But as far as being able to like be an example and, and really um, give my experience of how to work and go through these steps as they're laid out in the big book and have a full-on spiritual awakening, which I can assure you is, there's no way I can really describe it until you experience it yourself. Um, you know, the only way to, to, to be able to do that is to actually go through these steps. And, um, and today I have, um, I have a message and I have a solution, and it's because of that work, and it's because of God, and it's because of all of you people being here for me as well. So um, I hope I haven't rambled too much, but I'm glad to be home. Thanks. Bye. Bye.